Hi, this is Bob. Been a ham for 54 years. First licensed in 1958 at age 16. I started tinkering with radios when I was nine years old. This uh, particular video segment is about the use of the Heathkit PS23 power supply with the Collins KWM2 transceiver. This one is a KWM2A. The KWM2A uh, is the version that has the extra switch down here so you can switch in a whole bunch more crystals and you can cover a lot more range with it. It will operate anywhere from 3 to 30 megahertz. These were basically a military model. Okay, now the Heathkit power supply if you get one of these power supplies, you want to take the bottom cover off of the power supply and you want to look underneath on the bottom of these capacitors. And if there is uh, fluid that has come out and crusty stuff that is deposited there, these capacitors may very well be bad. If you don't have deposits, then you're very lucky and things should be okay. Now I worked at Heathkit in the service department and uh, worked there three years. I don't recall ever seeing one of these power supplies in repair. These things were on every workbench there and uh, they were used and used and used and they work and they work and they work. So they're a very rugged power supply and they're very conservatively rated and they're perfectly capable of running the KWM2 at full output no problem. You want to be sure and have the switch here set for 250 volts for the KWM2 and you set your bias for the final using this control right here the bias adjust and when you wire your connector for the back of the KWM2 if you have a Heathkit cable don't plug it into the KWM2 and turn it on because the Heathkit cable is wired differently than the KWM2 cable and the only thing you need to do is to change this end here where it plugs into the rig and you want to be connected to the variable vi bias if you notice here on the Heathkit uh, power supply which I think is really neat right on the outside here they show you where all the voltages and everything are so you want to use the one here that says adjustable bias that's right there, I think that's on pin 11. That's the one you want to connect for the KWM2 so you can set your 50 milliampers bias for your final tubes. And uh, this KWM2 here uh, would not make uh, full output when I first started with it. These trimmers were out of adjustment. You can see all these trimmers in here. There's a row of trimmers here and there's over on the other side here there's trimmers. There's 26 trimmers in there and I took all 26 of those trimmers out and adjusted them. Uh, I took them apart, I cleaned them, I put them back together, and you can do that without getting in there and unsoldering a single wire. And I have that information on the Collins Group site on Yahoo. So if you go to Yahoo, go to Groups, and then go to the Collins Group, and you will see in there, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a place where you can file uh, information called files. There's another one for photos. I believe it's in the photos file. Look for uh, I, uh, a bunch of pictures I made on how to take these apart and clean them. And you can do it guys. Took me about day, a day to do that but I got them all done. Now to show you how nice this this power supply works I'm going to turn it on here and we're on the uh, 10 meter band and it's warming up at the uh, the plate meter here always goes over full scale and then comes back as the receiver warms up and now we're getting warmed up now your tuning procedure on this is to go to tune and you can see an indication here on the meter and you tune for maximum with the pre-selector right there then you tune for a dip the dip is very small. The dip should occur at the same time you get maximum output. Now this is in the tune position. It just puts out a few watts for tuning the rig. Okay, now we've got that tuned. We're going to kick the, uh, the uh, emission knob here to lock position. That's on 28 megahertz. 
and we have pegged the 100 watt bird watt meter showing that the Heathkit power supply and the KWM2 work good together to produce over 100 watts. That's it. And uh, it works very well. Let's go down to uh, 80 meters and do the same thing. And we got to turn the pre-selector pre all the way down to uh, three and a half for 80 meters. There we are. With the emission control set in tune. And then we've got to adjust our output, our plate. There we are. You can either dip the plate meter on the KWM2 or, because that's a very small dip, or you can watch your output. Now that dip should occur at the same point that output is maximum showing on your watt meter or your SWR bridge, something that shows your output going to the antenna. And the reason for that is if they are together, the dip and the output then you know that your final is neutralized properly. If they don't, then you need to neutralize the final in your KWM2. Now we go to lock position. And there we are, over 100 watts on 80 meters. So I, ju I just wanted to show everybody that uh, the Heathkit power supply is a darn good power supply, does a real good job, is very rugged and dependable, and we'll run the KWM2 just fine. So that's it guys, 73's and good DX.